combine our knowledge of the anatomy of the eye with our knowledge of the lens. Um, so this is going to be an interesting session. Please ask questions if, um, if you don't understand anything. First, we're going to have a look at the normal focusing of the eye. We're going to look at what's happening in a myopic eye. We're going to look at what's happening in a hyperopic eye with astigmatism and presbyopia. And then Aletia is going to um, discuss the elements of an optical prescription with us. So this is going to be interesting. Um, let's have a look. I wonder why this is happening now. Okay, so why is this information important? It helps you um, talk the language of the industry and you also need to understand what happens on the retail floor as well as in the testing room and it aids in building trust through communication and relationship. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is a normal eye. So this is a picture of an eye. The front part is over here, the back is over there. We know this is the cornea and we know this is the lens. So if you look at a normal eye, it approximately has a power of 60 prism diopters plus 60 prism diopters. The cornea accounts for two thirds of it with a plus 40 diopter and the lens accounts for one third, which is plus 20 diopters. So it's a very strong optical system. So if you look at a normal eye, um, the eye will have no difficulty focusing at distance. If I'm talking about distance vision, we are talking about watching television, driving, um, watching, seeing the school board, anything six meters and beyond would be distance vision. And the eye will not get tired. If you look at near vision for a normal eye, you will see that the normal eye can focus clearly at near objects. If I'm talking about near vision, I'm talking about reading, I'm talking about the computer screen, anything uh, 40 centimeters to about 60 centimeters and closer is near vision. And the normal eye will not um, get tired when the, it's looking at anything near. So now there's a bit of focusing that needs to happen when the eye focuses from distance to near. We need to increase the power of the eye to focus from distance to near. And what happens is the lens inside of the eye becomes more like a ball. So the, the curvature steepens and that process is called accommodation. So the extra power comes from the lens. It thickens by changing the curvature to make it more powerful. So then we are going above plus 60 diopters for the eye to get your near vision into focus. <clears throat> so uh, one thing you can do is you can t take a piece of paper with typing or writing on it. You can put it very close to your eyes and you can feel accommodation happening. It's going to give you a pulling sensation and that is called accommodation. Okay. Now, most people do not have normal eyes. So we are going to look at all the anomalies. So we're going to look at myopia, hyperopia, stigmatism and presbyopia. I'm going to start with myopia. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips on how to remember this. My hope here is when you can see clearly near, but you cannot see far. So if you look at the word my hope here, you will see the first two letters is my. So I can see myself up close, but I cannot see far. We don't know exactly what the cause of this is, but we know that it is related to genetics and also the amount of time that you spent on a near device or reading or looking close by. And the reason our bodies does that is because if you've got a person that has a visual system that is still developing and you are putting that person at a near object most of the time, 
we adapt to our environment and then our near vision will become clear and our distance vision become blurry. And that's why it's important for children with um, developing visual systems to spend enough time outdoors and looking at distant objects. Okay, this is an image of someone with myopia. So you can see that the laptop screen is clear, but the front of the classroom is blurry. So the further you get, the more blurry it gets. Can you see that? So as you go off in the distance, it gets blurrier and blurrier. And the reason why this is happening is because the light that enters the eye, when you are looking at a distant object, falls in front of the retina instead of on the retina. To have clear vision, we need the light to fall on the retina, not in front and not at the back. So you can see if the light falls in front of the retina, the optical system, which is the lens and the cornea, bends the light too much. So there's too much bending of light happening. There's too much plus power in that optical system. And we need to neutralize this. How do we need neutralize this? If you've got too much plus, you put minus in. And that's why a myopic, a myopic eye is corrected with a minus lens. Okay, so <clears throat> you can ask, why does the light fall in front of the retina? We said it's because the optical power of the eye is too strong. We are going above a plus 60 diopters. And the other reason is the eyeball might be too long. So you've got bigger eyeballs and that can also cause the light to fall in front of the retina. Unfortunately, we can't change the size of the eyeball, but we can change the optics of the eye. And we do this with a minus lens for a myopic eye. Another tip there is minus starts with a M, myopic starts with an M. So a myopic eye, I can see myself up close and I use a minus lens to correct it. Okay, good. We find that the incidence of myopia appears to be getting higher and higher, especially in Asia. And the reason for that is because of overpopulation and people spending too much time on near, on near devices and reading so they don't look far often enough. And remember, minus lenses are always for myopia. Next, we're going to have a look at hyperopia. Now, hyperopia is when you can see clearly in the distance, but, and now I want you to um, memorize this next sentence. It does not mean that your near vision is blurry. So your near vision might be clear, but it will not be comfortable. And the reason for that is because the accommodation system in the eye can actually hide away a lot of the hyperopia. But after some time, the near vision will become blurry. And the patient will experience headaches and tired eyes. So you can, you can think of someone that goes to the gym and he is lifting a weight and he keeps it in the same position for 24 hours. At some time, he's going to drop that weight. It's the same with the eye. The moment the eye drops, the weight of hyperopia is when the near vision becomes blurry. This affects young people normally and particularly people that is spending a lot of time studying might notice it. Um, when they only look for, they might not always be aware of their hyperopia. But when they start spending time in front of textbooks or going to university, studying or doing computer work, they might feel that strain on their eyes and the hyperopia will become apparent. Now, with hyperopia, the focus point falls at the back of the retina. And the reason for that, this is because the optical um, devices, which is the cornea and the lens inside of the eye, is not strong enough. So here we are below 60 diopters. So then the focus points form at the back of the eye. And the other reason for this happening might be because the eyeball is too 
small. Now we can't change the side of, size of the eyeball, but we can change the optics. So if the optics of the eye itself is not providing enough plus power, we can give it extra power by putting a plus lens in the spectacles in front of the eye. And that is why hyperopia is always corrected with a plus lens. And here you can see an example of a hyperopic prescription, plus 1.75 diopters. Okay, let's look at astigmatism. So I don't know if you've got people coming into your practice saying, listen, I got this bad news. Um, I've been diagnosed with astigmatism. I want you to please reassure them that most people has astigmatism. It's not a disease. It is only a word um, relating to the shape of the cornea. Okay. So most people wearing glasses do have astigmatism. The cause is unknown, but we know that it happens because the cornea is flattened in the one direction and steeper in the other direction. So instead of being round like a soccer ball, it is shaped like a rugby ball. And if you take a rugby ball and you draw a line from the one point to the other point, and then you can see you can put it at a certain axis. So um, that is what astigmatism is. The left picture is a round cornea. And I just want to say that this is not something you can see with the naked eye. You can't see someone coming in, oh, you've got astigmatism, not at all. So it's very slight flattening and steepening of the cornea. So on the left side, you can see there's a round cornea. And on the right hand side, you will see that there's a pulling in the horizontal direction. So you get flattening in the horizontal direction, and you get steepening in the vertical direction. If you look at it from the side, this is what it will look like. Okay. And you c that axis can be in any direction. This one is flattening in a vertical direction. And it is steepening in the horizontal direction. And that's what it will look like from the side. Um, if you pull your eye like this. Now everyone is going to pull their eyes. Okay. If you pull your eye, you will see that if you look at an image, the one, every, all the lines that's in a vertical direction will be blurry and all the lines in a horizontal direction will be clear. Now, I actually have a picture that I want to show you. So I'm going to do it after this slideshow because I don't want to make Zoom um, dear Makar. I want to show you what it looks like at night when a, a, a person with astigmatism is driving. So I'll, I'll show you afterwards. Okay. So when a person has astigmatism, it's going to affect the distance vision as well as the near vision. It's, it's making the vision stretched and blurry in a certain direction. In the eye, Two complete focusing points are created, neither being clear. So not one of them will be clear. They, the two points can fall. The one can be in front of the retina, the other one at the back of the retina, or they can be both in front of the retina or both at the back of the retina. Okay, so there's a bit of a picture, but it you can see it more clearly with night driving. And that's why I want to show you that other picture. But if you look at this picture, you will see that all the lines in the horizontal direction is clear and all the lines in the vertical direction is blurry so the image is pulled in a direction and that is what a person with astigmatism will be seeing okay so to correct astigmatism um, we need to do the opposite of what we are uh, of what the eye is doing so i'm just gonna get a i'm gonna get a just quickly gonna get a racky I'll be here. Okay. okay. If you look, I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me in the corner there? Aletia, just give me a thumbs up yep. or not. Okay, yep. right. If you look at this elastic, this is astigmatism because I pull it in a certain direction. Now the way we want to correct is we want to make this round. We don't want to make it elongated. 
So what we do is we need to pull in the opposite direction with the same amount of power that we are pulling in the other direction to get it round. So if you look at a cylindrical prescription and you look at that last part of the script with the sill and the axis, the first portion will be the cylindrical power. And that's going to tell us how much we need to pull. And the axis tells us in which direction. Because it doesn't help we pull and we don't know where we need to pull. We need to pull in the right direction and that will be 90 degrees from where the steepening of the cornea will be. Okay. So the lens typically that corrects astigmatism, you will see it's going to be thin like this one. It is thin there at the top and the bottom, but it's thicker on the sides because it's flat in the vertical direction and it's got steeper curves in the horizontal direction. Okay. That's because we need to bend light differently depending on which meridian we are focusing on. Okay. This is just an image to show that it can be in any direction. It's not necessarily 180 and 90 degrees. It can be any, any axis. Okay, so there's a, a script. Um, you see a minus one, minus 1.25, axis 95. So that last portion there is the correction of the astigmatism. The minus 1.25 diopters tell you how much we need to pull and the axis 95 tells us in which direction. All right. Um, now, typically, you would put a diopter at the back of the powers, but we do not always do that if there is astigmatism in a prescription, and then it's also okay. So you can write it like this with a diopter at the back of the powers, or you can write it without the diopter. Okay, so if you look at that lens, there's a stapler at the top with no lens in front of it. At the bottom, you, you put a lens in front of it. And you can see the image of the stapler are being pulled in a direction. So it's not just merely bigger or smaller. It's being pulled in a direction. And now you know the lens that you are looking through is correcting astigmatism. And it's got a cylinder power in it. And you can, you can see it's getting pulled in a direction, so it is correcting astigmatism at a certain axis. All right. Okay, the last component I'm going to be discussing before I hand over to Aletia will be presbyopia. So, presbyopia happens to everyone. If you reach the age of 40 and beyond, you are going to become presbyopic. Um, people will come into the practice and they will be complaining that they are, their arms are too short. So they can't focus nearby. They have to keep the objects further away. Um, so we see that the age of presbyopia is starting to get earlier and earlier on in life. Um, uh, there's certain factors that influence this, but for this um, example, we're going to talk about the 40s. So we're going to say presbyopia starts in the 40s. That gives us a, a big range. And you can become presbyopic even if you have normal vision, myopia, hyperopia, or astigmatism. Okay, so what's happening is with presbyopia, the lens inside of the eye if you are young, the lens can change its shape, it become more steep, it can become round to make near objects clear. But as we get older, the lens inside of the eye is not as elastic anymore. And it uses its, um, its uh, ability to change shape. And Therefore, the lens cannot accommodate anymore. So the, when a person with normal distance vision has presbyopia and they look near, 
the near vision will be blurry. Does that make sense? Okay. And this is something that happens with time. So it starts in a patient's 40s. And the lens loses its accommodation ability more and more as the patient gets older. So at 40, you might have a certain amount of diopters of, um, uh, of an ad, and then the ad will become bigger and bigger as the person gets older because um, he'll have more and more difficulties focusing at near. Okay, so the symptoms that a patient with uh, presbyopia might experience, they are going to hold objects further away to be able to have a, a clear picture. The eyes will get tired and they'll get headaches and they will ask for better lighting. They will sit outside or will have a, a lamp um, over their left shoulder if they are right-handed. Um, and uh, again, it starts in the 40s and that's when accommodation begins to become insufficient. Okay, so when they are looking at the near objects, we need to increase the power of the lens because remember the lens inside of the eye cannot do it anymore. So we need extra plus power for looking at near objects. And we do this by giving them an additional plus power for reading. So the additional focusing power is called the add in the prescription. And that is, we add it to the distance prescription to give the reading prescription. Okay, with normal aging, um, the ad will increase as the eyes accommodation decrease. So, a patient prescription can tell you a lot about that patient. Um, for example, if someone comes in with a, and he is a myop, you can, you can, Assume that this person liked reading when they were young. Maybe they, um, or maybe it's genetic. You don't know. And if you look at the ad, you can, you can guess what age they are. Um, please don't say it aloud to them. But a person's ad can definitely give you a very good estimation of their age. If you are about forty-five years. You might have an 050 ad or a plus 0.75 ad, 47, go to a plus one. There is a formula that you can use for this, but for um, this course, we will just be estimating it like this. Okay, so um, you need an extra ad to see clearly at near, but if the patient is looking through those reading glasses with the extra ad, he will not be able to see far with them. And that is because they move the reading spectacles to the top of their noses. And this can make someone um, look a bit older and it's not very functional because they have to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. And that is why progressive lenses has been um, designed. So progressive lenses um, incorporates the distance vision at the top and the re reading um, script at the bottom, but it increases gradually. So a patient um, does not have to wear his spectacles on the tip of his nose anymore. He can put them up high and then no one will know that they've got a reading ad. Okay. This is a picture of someone um, that is pressed by big, so they do need a reading ad. On the left-hand side, the patient is wearing reading glasses. So you can see that the near vision is clear, but when they look up, the distance vision is blurry. On the right-hand side, you get the same patient, but he's not wearing reading glasses. He is wearing progressive lenses. So his vision will be clear at near, intermediate, and distance. Okay, so that's everything from my side. I'm going to give over to Aletia now. She's going to discuss elements of the prescription with you. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so let's look at the prescription. As we all know, the prescription are usually written by your ophthalmologist or your optometrist with the abbreviation of RX. 
um, it is a set of numbers that defines the power of the lenses to correct the vision. The RX could be for your prescription for distance, near, or intermediate vision. The, um, the custom, usually on the prescription, as you guys know, you'll find the patient's name and maybe age, a bit more detail um, that, should, that you should find in your prescription. The prescription also provides uh, the following, OD for right, uh, OS for left, and OU for both eyes. I think in practice, it's not that uh, often that you'll see it. It's more when you get a referral letter from an ophthalmologist or a prescription from an ophthalmologist. If there's no power um, that's required on the lens, it's usually written as a PL for plano or infinity sign or a 0.00 diopters. So let's look at the elements of the prescription. The distance prescription components are usually made up as a sphere, a sole, which is the second part, and then the axis, which is the degree for the sole. So if we look at the same prescription, you'll see that there's a minus in front of 1.25, which indicates that the patient is a myope, a myope so that it's an RX4 myopia patient. If the sphere is a plus, it will be a hyperopia. And then if you look at the second part of the prescription, like Jolene showed you guys just now, the minus 0.75 axis 95 is the patient's astigmatism part. So there we go. This is an example of a hyperopic prescription with astigmatism. So the plus in front of the 2.25 means it's a hyper, hyper, and then the minus 275 axis 30 is the astigmatism part. But remember, Plus lenses for distance must for hyperopic patient must always be plus. Always, always, always. The stigmatism part of the prescription uh, describes two components. So the minus 2.75 is the focusing to require to correct the flattening. And then the 30 degrees are the, the angle. But also, um, yep, go on. So, this is an example of what you guys usually use in your practices when you receive the prescription from your optometrist or ophthalmologist. It will usually have the practice name on it, the Optics X. It will have your patient's name on it. It will indicate whether it's a distant prescription, near prescription, intermediate prescription, or reading specs. And um, also the PD, the pupillometer distance of 63. So take note that we usually in practice write prescription that the prescription that's on your left hand side is usually the patient's right eye. So the plus 2.25 minus 1.25 axis 60 is actually the patient's right eye, but it's written on your left hand side. And then if you look at the, the following example, the OS, which is the left uh, eye, will be on your right hand side. So it's usually like a mirror image to, to give you guys an indication.